Hello everyone and welcome to another optimization video and this one involves proportionality. So I just before we get, begin, I'm just going to go through the basics of proportionality so you understand what it means. Uh, I won't go through everything, I'll just sort of introduce you two key concepts that will be able to help us with solving this uh, the problem that we're about to have. So there's direct proportionality and that's where if we have like five parts of something then we're going to have five parts of something else. They're directly proportional. So uh, again, sort of equal in the increase of magnitude. Whereas with the inverse proportionality, whenever something increases, say the variable d, then um, f is going to decrease. So if we had, for example, two parts d, then uh, it would be half there where f is at. Okay, so we've got the idea of direct proportionality and inverse proportionality. So uh, now we're going to be able to solve through this problem here that we have on the board. So, I've drawn up the diagram already. However, there are a few things that I'll just read out. A few extra details in the question that will be able to help us. So, the intensity of a light source at a distance is directly proportional to the square of the distance from the source. Okay, so there's some very important information involving proportionality. Uh, two light sources, one twice as strong as the other, are 12 metres apart. At what distance, or at what point on the line segment, joining the two sources, is the intensity the weakest? Okay, so we're going to have to work through this, and um, well, what we know is that uh, the weaker light source, which we'll denote just as being I1, the intensity of light source 1, which we'll give, uh, for example, this one here, because again, it, the question asks us to consider a point that's x meter from the uh, weaker source. This would be the weaker one, and this would be twice as strong. And um, what we can say from this is that the intensity of uh, number 1 there is equal to, and it's going to be equal to k over x squared. And the reason it's going to be over k over x squared is because, of course, that proportionality that we had in the original question there. And again, we don't know that this is 1. This is just going to be some constant of proportionality. And we're going to have an x squared value because, of course, um, with the proportionality question, it says that at a distance is that is directly proportional to the square of the distance from the source. So again, this is the square of the distance from the source, and this is our constant of proportionality. So now what we can do is we can look at I2, the intensity of the second source, and the intensity of the second source can be given by the equation, and uh, again, it's going to be, because k is going to be how bright it is, it's going to be 2k, because this is again the constant of proportionality, but it's twice as much as that light source, because this light source here is twice as powerful, so it's going to be 2k, and I'll just get rid of that old working out there, and it's going to be over, again, the square of the distance, so we think what's the distance from this light source here to the point on the line where it's the weakest, where it's not as bright. And uh, the answer is, of course, we can see from this diagram, if that's 12 metres and that's x, then this is going to be 12 take x metres. So uh, if that's the case, uh, what we're able to denote, uh, denote on this line is that it's going to be over 12 take x squared. And again, 12 take x squared because uh, we're squaring the distance, because again, it says is directly proportional to the square of the distance from the source. Direct proportionality. Okay, so now that we've got, obviously, the strength of our light globes, and we've got the distances squared, we're able to go through this and work out, okay, how are we going to solve this kind of problem? And the answer is we need to find the total intensity. So intensity total, which I'll just denote as being it, or i so, uh, subscripted t. And um, from that, what we need to do is we simply need to add i1 and i2 together. So we end up with k over, and uh, hopefully black one might actually be a bit better there, k over x squared plus, and then we have 2k over 12 take x squared. And that gives us the total intensity because it's I1 plus I2. 
Now it's slightly gone off the board there, so I'll just write that a little bit more straighter. So again, 2k over 12 take x squared. And uh, from that, we're going to be able to differentiate for optimization. And I'll just position that a little nicely there. Yep. And so what we do is, of course, we just take the derivative of each term, because, of course, it's going to be the sum rule here. Now, in order for us not to have to use quotient rule as much, what we can do is we can rearrange it. So we just need to apply the power rule. Now, in order to do this, what we do is we simply go, well, okay, we have x squared in the denominator, so we can move x into the numerator, and it's going to be kx to the power of negative 2. Because, of course, as a positive exponent in uh, the um, denominator, so it's going to have a negative exponent when we move it to the numerator based on the law of indices. And now what we can do is we need to look at actually having the second part and bringing it up. So again, we bring up the denominator, and what we get is we get plus 2k, because of course that's a numerator term, and then what we have is we have 12 take x to the power of negative 2. And again, negative 2 because we have to inverse index. So now that we have that, it's going to make the maths a little bit simpler. We don't have to apply the quotient rule, and we're going to be able to work out the optimum point on that line where it is going to be the weakest. The sources of intensity are going to be weak, so it's going to be probably the darkest point on that line, even though it's probably going to still be well illuminated. Okay, so what we're going to need to do now is we're going to need to actually take the derivative of this term because the derivative helps us optimize that x value. So if I just rub out a bit of the board space here, what we do is we go and take the derivative of this, so the i t prime is going to be equal to, and we just apply power rule, so we bring the negative 2 to the front, so it's negative 2k, and then it's x to the power of negative 3, because again, we need to subtract 1 from the exponent after we've got the product of... Um, the term by moving the, co uh, the exponent to the front with the coefficient. And then what we need to do is we need to do the same with this part here. So uh, what we do is we bring negative 2 down to the front, and so from that we get uh, negative 4, so we get negative 4k, and then what we need to do is we need to consider this as being a chain rule, because again we have something multiplied outside of the brackets, so we have negative 4k by bringing the exponent down, and then what we have is the bracket term as is, and we subtract 1 from the exponent, so 12 take x to the power of negative 3, and then what we do is we take the derivative of what's in the bracket term there, and we put that on the end. And that's lots of negative 1 there, because of course we have negative x, there's an imaginary 1 there, so the derivative of what's in brackets is going to be equal to negative 1. And now what we need to do is we need to solve for 0. So what we do is we set the equation equal to 0, and again it's always good to get rid of negative indices, even though it was easier to differentiate with them. So um, what we're going to do... Oh, I actually wrote that down there when I should have wrote it up here, sorry. Negative 4k, 12 take x, so 3, lots of negative 1. And uh, we can rewrite this as being negative 2k over x to the power of 3. Again, we're just bringing it back as we did before, because um, it was x to the 3 originally in the denominator. And then it's take 4k over 12 x take x to the power of 3 in the denominator. And then from that, what we've got to remember is that there's actually a negative 1 on the end here, and negative 1, what we can do is because that's negative and that's negative, we can actually make the term in the middle positive. And there go, therefore we have our uh, derivative, and we set that equal to 0, because of course we need to solve for the value of x. And now, what we do is we simply uh, go through the process. So now I've gone ahead and done is I've just gone and rewrote this. What I've done is I've moved this term here that's negative to the left-hand side of the equation, and because it's negative, we happen to inverse the operation, so it's no longer take, it's now plus. 
So we have 2k over x to the 3 equals, and then we have our right hand side as is. And then what I did is I cross multiplied. So in order to do this, I brought the uh, denominator from the right hand side up to the numerator on the left hand side. And I took the uh, numerator, uh, denominator on the left hand side and brought it up to the right hand side. So we get 2k, lots of 12 take x to the 3 equals 4k x to the 3. And uh, from that, what we can do in the last phase is we're able to actually work out the value of x, or get an equation that we can graph. So what I'll do is I'll just clear off this little bit of board space here, and um, again, what we can do here is we can bring the 2k over to the other side, and we can divide by 2k, because again, we want to get rid of the k's, so we just have x's. So what we have is we have 12 take x to the power of 3 equals, and it's going to be 4kx to the 3 on 2k, because again we're moving 2k from the numerator on that side to the denominator on the other side, and that cancels out, and that cancels out, and that just becomes 2. So what we get here is when we move it to the other side, uh, we end up with, in fact we'll move this one to the other side, we get 2x to the power of 3, take, because again this is positive on that side, so it's going to be negative when we move it to that side, so 12 take x to the power of 3 equals 0. And what we could do is we could graph this equation on our calculator. And uh, when we graph it, we would be able to see where the x value, well, where, which value of x is where it cuts across the x-axis. Because of course that's where it's going to be equal to 0. And of course that means it's going to be a stationary point. So we consider the values in context, so it's going to be somewhere between 0 and 12. We graph it on our graphics calculator by typing in this function, so y equals, or the f of x equals that. And then what we do is we survey it for the most logical answer, so the x-intercept that makes sense. And when we've done that, we should end up with something like this, which I'll just draw up on the board here, with a set of axes. And in fact, what I'll do is I'll actually erase this, and I'll just show it for the interval where 5 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 6. And then what we end up with is something that looks like this. In fact, that line again shouldn't be there, but uh, you have 5 there. And we have 6 down there. And we should see the equation cutting around about 5.3. And again, what we can do is we can go into your calculator, and you can actually graph this. And uh, you should see, of course, the values actually go up quite quickly here as well, so that could be about 100 there. Uh, this is just doing it off the graphics calculator, what's actually shown. But uh, you should see, when you take the zeros function, and you choose left bound and right bound around about this value, of course this value makes sense in context, because we've got 0 to 12, because 12 can be the absolute maximum value of x, and uh, 0 can be the absolute minimum value of x. But uh, we should end up with, when you take the zeros function, a solution where x is approximately equal to 5.31 meters. And again, that shows us where the darkest point on the line is, the point of least intensity, based on our original proportionality question. So there we go, we know that this value here of x is 5.31, and what we can do is we can solve out the other side by having this as being 12 take 5.31 meters, and we know where the darkest point on the line is from the two light sources. So that's just a video on proportionality. That, again, that's something you can use when optimization and calculus. Hopefully you got this video. If you have any questions, feel free to write comments below. But uh, yeah, that's just the process of it. The hardest part is getting into that equation. Remember the constant of proportionality and uh, what the question actually says. So again, hopefully that helped, uh, and thank you for watching.